Mark Anthony Tildesley was a seven-year-old English schoolboy who disappeared on June 1, 1984 whilst visiting a fair in Wokingham, Berkshire. A widespread search of the Wokingham area, involving both police officers and British Army soldiers, did not locate Tildesley. Thames Valley Police initially suspected that Tildesley's body was buried near Wellington Road in Wokingham, near the fair from which he was abducted but they now believe that he was probably buried in a shallow grave on abandoned farmland. To publicize Tildesley's disappearance, a national poster campaign was launched, with one displayed in every police station in the country. The disappearance was publicized in the local Wokingham Times, in national newspapers like The Times, The Daily Mail and The Daily Mirror, and on ITV's Thames News and was featured on the premiere episode of the BBC's Crime Watch UK. Despite a massive public response, however, Tildesley was still not located. In 1989, Tildesley's disappearance was linked to the Operation Orchid investigation into missing children. In 1990 as part of this investigation, it emerged that on the night he disappeared, Tildesley had been abducted, drugged, tortured raped and murdered by a London-based pedophile gang led by Sidney Cook. A man named Leslie Bailey, was charged with murder in 1991 and was given two live sentences the following year, he was murdered in prison in 1993. A memorial service for Tildesley was held and a memorial bench placed at the entrance to the fairground site. A headstone was also placed in a nearby burial ground. Background and disappearance Mark Anthony Tildesley was born on August 31, 1976 in Berkshire to John Tildesley and Lavinia Rachel Gladys Tildesley. He had a brother, Christopher, and a sister, Christina, who had moved out of the family home to live in nearby Finchampstead with her husband, Ted, and their daughter, Mary. The Tildesleys lived at 1 Rose Court, off Rose Street, in Wokingham Town, Centre. It was a combination of a small semi-detached cottage and an adjoining bungalow annex. The bungalow annex has since been demolished and rebuilt as a separate house called 1A Rose Court as of 2010, leaving the original cottage as a mid-terrace. Tildesley was a year three pupil of the Palmer C. of E. Junior School, renamed All Saints' Aided Primary School in 2009, in Norris Avenue in Wokingham. Half-term holiday on May 25, 1984 Tildesley School had broken up for its spring half-term holiday. The Frank Ayres Fun Fair, which came to the Carnival Field off Wellington Road in Wokingham four times a year, had come again during that holiday week. Tildesley was desperate to go to the fair but he did not have enough money to do so. His pocket money was only 30p a week, so he supplemented this by putting trolleys from Tesco and Denmark Street, back to where they belonged, thus collecting their customers' abandoned 10p deposits. Frank Hare's fun fair at the end of the week, on the afternoon of June 1, 1984, Tildesley had met a man outside the candy shop in Denmark Street, which has also since closed and which was located 20 yards up from the then Tesco site, who gave him a 50p coin to buy some sweets with. The shop assistant who had served Tildesley many times before, Margaret Hickman, thought it was odd as he usually only paid in 10p pieces. The man said that he was going to the fair later that day and that he would pay for him to go on the dodgems that evening. After eating dinner, at just after 5.30pm, Tildesley left his home at No. 1 Rose Court, off Rose Street, on his most treasured possession, a second-hand gold Raleigh Tomahawk bike to make the half-a-mile journey to the fair, which would open at 6 p.m. that evening. He promised to be back home by 7.30 p.m., saying don't worry mum, I won't be late. On his way to the fair, he met with two of his friends who were in the town at the time. However, they wanted to go back home first and then go to the fair later so Tildesley decided to go to the fair alone immediately. This was the last time anyone who knew Tildesley Whale saw him alive. Reported missing at 7.30 p.m., the time at which Tildesley had promised to return home, he had still not arrived. At 8 p.m., his parents went down to the fair to find him. However, 
all they could find was his bike chained to railings near to the entrance of the carnival field where the fair was being held. Having spent an hour searching around the fairground site to no avail, Tildesley's parents returned home with his bike, to find his brother Christopher watching television but no trace of their missing son. At 10 p.m., Lavinia Tildesley phoned the local police, to report Tildesley missing and to ask if they had heard anything, but they had not and, they recommended she phone back in an hour. In the meantime, she phoned his sister Christina in Finchampstead and Christina's husband Ted also went over to the carnival field to search for him without any success. Initial search Thames Valley Police undertook an intensive and thorough search of the Wokingham area. This included using a helicopter, searching the carnival field site with loud, hailer appeals, as well as searching nearby rivers, streams, lakes and ponds. Heat-seeking equipment was also borrowed from the Metropolitan Police, which could detect dead bodies. 5. Every worker and stall holder at the Frank Ayres Fun Fair was questioned the day after Tildesley went missing. Wokingham Town Center's 29 streets, consisting of 960 shops, businesses and houses, had to be covered by officers on a door-to-door -door basis. On the following weekend of 9 June 10, 1984, 15 policemen and two tracker dogs teamed up with 100 soldiers from the Royal Electrical and Mechanical Engineers Training Battalion in Arbor Field Garrison to search the south side of Wokingham, from Barkham Road through to Amen Corner, which proved unproductive. Two weeks after the disappearance, Detective Superintendent, Roger Nicklin had to concede that the police still had absolutely no idea about Mark's disappearance. A train driver on the Guilford to Reading line reported seeing a fox carrying what looked like a child's arm in its mouth, but three weeks later this turned out to be animal bones. A strong smell of decomposed flesh was also reported in the nearby village of Crowthorn, but this turned out to be rotten sheep. National appeals in addition to a national poster campaign being launched, with every police station in the country displaying one. Tildesley's disappearance not only appeared in the regional Wokingham Times, but it was also featured heavily in national news coverage at the time. The Times, the Daily Mail and the Daily Mirror all wrote about the story, and the case was also covered in ITV's Thames News. On June 7, 1984, Tildesley's disappearance was mentioned on the first ever episode of the newly launched BBC television series Crime Watch UK a program which reconstructs major unsolved crimes with a view to gaining information from members of the public. These first appeals resulted in 400 calls being made to the police by members of the general public. Shortly, after Tildesley's disappearance, several witnesses reported seeing a boy who fitted his description being dragged away forcefully against his will away from the fairground site by a stooping man between 7 p.m. and 8 p.m. that evening. Further sightings were at the nearby cockpit footpath on the corner of Denmark Street and Langborough Road as well as at No. 9 and No. 51 Langborough Road. There, were also a number of conflicting sightings. A witness reported seeing a boy who looked like Tildesley sitting on the wall of the Waitrose car park in Rose Street with a bike similar to his at his side at 8.10 p.m. on the evening of his disappearance. However, Tildesley's bike was actually found chained to railings at the entrance to the fairground site in Wellington Road half a mile away by his parents at exactly the same time. Reconstructions the day after the first Crime Watch UK broadcast, the police shot their first video reconstruction. A seven-year-old local boy dressed in clothes similar to those worn by Tildesley and was filmed around Rose Street including sitting on the wall of the Waitrose car park and also at the fairground site as well. Whilst only a partial reconstruction, it did get a positive response. Two days before the first anniversary of Tildesley's disappearance, and with the Frank Ayres Fun Fair back on the carnival field in Wokingham, a second police reconstruction was filmed. These included shots in Rose Court, Rose Street, Broad Street, Denmark Street, the carnival field off Wellington Road and Langborough Road. Ten-year-old Paul Little played the part of Tildesley, whilst Peter Russell played the part of the stooping man. 
In the case's second appearance on the program in just over a year, the footage was aired at 9.25 p.m. on June 13, 1985 on Grimewatch UK. A full reconstruction of his last known moments was broadcast, in which Mrs. Tildesley took part. Over 1,000 people called in with information, one of the highest volumes in Crime Watch UK history. Success of appeals overall, the police received a huge public response with over 1,200 different individuals phoning in, who gave 2,500 potential leads, but little concrete evidence emerged. Crucially, Thames Valley Police never received any breakthroughs that would lead them to either Tildesley being found safe and well, or in the worst case scenario, to the identity of the perpetrators and or the recovery of his body. Initial investigations The initial investigation was led by Detective Constable Jeff Gilbert. Coincidentally, Gilbert knew Tildesley personally through his mother's job at the local Wokingham police station. From the start, Wokingham police were unprepared for such a major task. Only four officers were assigned to the case, because Thames Valley police were short-staffed as many officers were away putting down the 1984 to 1985 miners strike. As Wokingham police station was too small, the attic storeroom was used as the incident office. The police also promptly set up a mobile office on the fairground site. By the first Sunday following his disappearance, June 3, 1984, they had to use the Wokingham Baptist Church on Milton Road in Wokingham, immediately behind the police station, as a meeting room. The next day after that, Mrs. Tildesley said in the Daily Express I am sure somebody is holding him. However, Superintendent Alan Gussell conceded Mark may have been murdered. The police had to check that given the age difference between Tildesley and his brother and sister, that he was in fact Mrs. Tildesley's son and not Christina's. D.C. Gilbert was summoned to do this task, which Mrs. Tildesley described as, ridiculous. Tildesley's brother, Christopher, who had had an argument with him earlier on the day of his disappearance, was initially the prime suspect. However, it soon became clear that this could not be the case. On June 7, 1984, the day of the first Crime Watch UK appeal, two anonymous calls came in to say that they suspected a fairground worker called Martin Early was responsible for Tildesley's disappearance. He had worked for Frank Ayres for 11 years and was at the Wokingham Fun Fair on the night Tildesley went missing. He was arrested and confessed to Tildesley's abduction, saying that he had raped and murdered him at his caravan nearby, which fitted in with what a hypnotist had said was likely to have happened to Tildesley. However, he changed his story so many times, that it became unreliable and detectives worked out that they had in fact got the wrong man. After six weeks, the case became so big that Thames Valley Police had to move the incident office from Wokingham 20 miles up the M4 motorway to Solamstead near Newbury. On August 16, 1984, the Metropolitan Police called on another fairground worker, Sidney Cook, at his home in London. One of his colleagues had alerted detectives at the Tildesley Incident Office about his suspicious behavior towards young boys in the past. The police asked Cook whether he was in Wokingham on the night Tildesley had vanished. He denied this and had an alibi. He claimed that he was working at a fair opposite West Hendon Police Station in London that night, and the fair owner, Rosie Gray, confirmed that Cook was her employee. Cook therefore remained on file but was eliminated as a suspect. By October 1984, with little new leads to go on, Thames Valley Police started to wind down their investigation into Tildesley's disappearance. By April 1987, the press released a story about a possible link regarding attempted abductions of young children over the past six months in the Wokingham area. The police investigated whether these abductions could be linked to Tildesley's disappearance, but this was eventually dismissed. Operation Orchid in 1989 the Metropolitan Police established Operation Orchid, an inquiry into the disappearance of missing children. This was led by Detective Chief Superintendent Roger Studley. As part of this operation, in December 1990, they interviewed a convicted, 
East London-based pedophile gang member called Leslie Catweasel Bailey, who had already been charged with two other murders, that of 14-year-old Jason Swift and 6-year-old Barry Lewis, both of which occurred after Tildesley's disappearance. The police had obtained a hand-drawn paper map and a handwritten paper letter which had been given by Bailey to a fellow inmate at Wandsworth Prison. The map showed where Tildesley had been killed, and the letter, which had been written by a cellmate, was addressed to Sidney Cook, who was also another gang member, and who also knew about his murder. At this point, Bailey, who suffered from a mild learning disability which meant that he had limited understanding, confessed that his pedophile gang, whom the police had nicknamed the Dirty Dozen, led by Cook, from the King's Estate in Hackney, had abducted, drugged, tortured, raped and murdered Tildesley on the night he disappeared. It was at this point that the police realized that the stooping man who had been frequently described in connection with his disappearance was in fact Cook. Mark's party on the night of Tildesley's disappearance, Bailey had been asked by another member, of the gang, his lover Lenny Smith, to drive him from Hackney to Wokingham, as there would be a party, of child sex abuse, in a caravan owned by Cook located near to a fair. Upon arriving in Wokingham, Smith went into the fair to find Cook and they came back to Bailey's white Triumph 2000 car in Langborough Road, near to the fairground, with a young boy who was dragging back, despite being, enticed away from the fairground on the promise of a 50p bag of sweets. The young boy, Tildesley, had to be physically picked up and forced into the back of the car to get him in. With Bailey driving, Smith was in the front passenger seat, whilst Cook was holding Tildesley back in the rear of the car. They then met a fourth man, a relative of Bailey's known as Odd Bod, who had a mental age of, an eight-year-old, at Cook's blue and white caravan, which had lace curtains. This was located a short drive away past the relocated Tesco and Finchamstead Road, on a field called the Moors on Avindon's Lane, which is located in between Finchamstead and Barkham. After Cook gave Tildesley a glass of milk laced with muscle relaxant, of which he only drank half, as he said it tastes funny, the foreman raped Tildesley, starting with Cook and ending with Smith. After more muscle relaxant was applied directly down the boy's throat, the gang rape started again. Smith then forced a tablet into Tildesley's mouth before grabbing him by the throat. The party, referred to as Mark's party by Bailey, had already lasted for half an hour and Bailey stated he knew at this point that Tildesley was dead as he could not feel a pulse, but that Cook had told him that he was fine and that he would take the boy home. This meant that it was likely that Tildesley was already dead before his parents even knew that he was missing. After the murder of Tildesley, Bailey drove Smith back to Hackney, arriving there after midnight. Before Bailey dropped Smith off at Marsh's, Smith said to Bailey that he would leave the disposal of the body to Cook. Unfinished investigation The police received a judge's commendation for pursuing an honorable and sustained investigation which led to the eventual solving of the Tildesley case. However, the police admitted in public that the case had not been finished as Tildesley's body had not been found. In 2007, Thames Valley Police set up the dedicated review team to reinvestigate unsolved murders and serious sexual assaults over the previous 50 years, which included Tildesley's murder, but nothing has come of it. Tildesley is the Dirty Dozen Ring's first known murder victim. However, in 2015, following media and political pressure, the police reopened the case of the July 29, 1981 murder of seven-year-old Vishal Meritra near East Putney Tube, station in London. The Dirty Dozen gang are being investigated in relation to this killing, which was more than three years earlier than the murder of Tildesley. Also in 2015, former Chief Superintendent Roger Studley said he feared a cover-up by the Metropolitan Police over the Tildesley murder case itself. He maintained that there was sufficient evidence to prosecute Cook over Tildesley's killing. Legal Proceedings Sidney Cook Sidney Cook Sidney Charles Cook was born on April 18, 1927. In 1984 his occupation was that of a fairground worker. Nicknamed Hissing Sid, 
he was described by the Guardian newspaper in 1999 as Britain's most notorious pedophile. Cook has never admitted playing any role in Tilde Sully's murder, despite a tiger key ring identical to the one owned by the boy being found in his repossessed dark colored Jaguar XJ car in 1985, a year after Tilde Sully's disappearance. No charges were therefore brought against him as the Crown Prosecution Service felt that Bailey's confession was insufficient evidence for his case to result in a successful conviction. In addition, the Crown Prosecution Service also declined to prosecute Cook for Tilde Sully's murder as he was already in prison for the manslaughter of Jason Swift. Leslie Bailey Leslie Patrick Bailey seemed to be the only one of the gang who would admit to the murder of Tilde Sully. Bailey suffered from a mild learning disability which meant that he had limited understanding. When he was sent to trial for Tilde Sully's killing, he was already in prison for the 1985 killing of Jason Swift. On 7 October, 1993, Bailey was murdered by strangulation with a ligature in Whitemore Prison in Cambridgeshire. The death was welcomed by the boy's parents. Mr. Tildesley said he would like to shake the murderer's hand, whilst Mrs. Tildesley opened a bottle of wine to celebrate. It later emerged that Bailey had been murdered by two other inmates. Lenny Smith Leonard William Gilchrist Smith was born on 23 August. 1954. Smith has never admitted playing any role in Tilde Sully's murder. No charges were therefore brought against him as the Crown Prosecution Service felt that Bailey's confession was insufficient evidence for his case to result in a successful conviction. Smith died of AIDS in a secret unit in Nottingham Prison in 2006. Once again, Mrs. Tilde Sully responded by celebrating the news. Odd bod A, fourth man, mentioned by Bailey as part of the Operation Orchid investigation as being partly responsible for Tilde Sully's murder, was a relative of him. He was referred to as Odd Bod throughout the investigation. However, as Odd Bod had a mental age of an eight-year-old, he could not have his name disclosed or be charged, put on trial or sentenced in connection with Tilde Sully's killing. No, charges were therefore brought against him as the Crown Prosecution Service considered him to be too young for his case to result in a successful conviction. Murder charges on October 18, 1991, Bailey, along with persons unknown, was charged with the murder of Tilde Sully. Trial The Tilde Sully family kept away from the majority of the trial at Reading Crown Court. Bailey stood alone in connection with Tilde Sully's killing. It was very unusual, in that the judge not only named Cook and Smith, but also described in court what he believed they had done to Tildesley, despite neither of them having ever been charged in relation to the case. Equally unusual was Bailey's instructions to his defense barrister to seek the maximum sentence possible, saying that he was surprised and disappointed and could not understand why Cook and Smith were not in the dock with him. Sentences on October 22, 1992 Bailey pleaded guilty at Reading Crown Court to the lesser charge of manslaughter and one charge of buggery and received two live sentences on December 9, 1992. On hearing the verdict, Mrs. Tildesley responded by calling for the reintroduction of the death penalty, saying he should have been hanged. Body Bailey claimed he did not know where Cook had buried the body. Cook has indicated he knows where the body is buried, but refuses to tell the police or the boy's family, the exact location. Following the confession by Bailey to the murder, the police dug up the Moores Field in Avendance Lane in March 1991, but they did not find anything. In May 1998, the police refused to re-question Cook, in relation to Tilde Sully's murder, and also refused to dig up a nearby golf course to search for his remains. In 2012, a fragment of human skull, discovered near Evendon's Lane, was found not to be Tildesley's. Tildesley's body has never been found and the murder is among Wokingham's most notorious crimes. Thames Valley Police initially thought his body was buried within a mile of Wellington Road in Wokingham, the location of the fair, from which he was abducted, but they now believe that his body is buried in a shallow grave on abandoned farmland.
In 2019 the Tildesley family made a last-ditch plea begging Cook to end the family's 35-year torment and reveal to police the whereabouts of his body before Cook takes the secret of his whereabouts to his grave. Aftermath and memorial Tildesley's bedroom The boy's parents kept his bedroom exactly how it was the day he went missing, until Mrs. Tildesley moved to nearby Langley Common Road in Barkham, further away than Avindens Lane shortly after Mr. Tildesley's death in 2005. Memorial Bench Shortly after the boy's disappearance, a public memorial, that of a jade-colored bench, was erected exactly at the very spot where he was seen leaving the fairground by the general public. This can be seen directly to the right of the entrance to the Carnival Leisure Park on Wellington Road in Wokingham. A nameplate on a plank of wood at the top of the bench reads in memory of Mark Tildesley. When Mrs. Tildesley died in 2011, a second nameplate was put on the bench, with her name on it, on the plank of wood directly beneath the one with the boy's nameplate on, in remembrance of her. Memorial Service Tildesley's Bedroom Edit The boy's parents kept his bedroom exactly how it was the day he went missing, until Mrs. Tildesley moved to nearby Langley Common Road in Barkham, further away than Avindens Lane shortly after Mr. Tildesley's death in 2005. 5-8. Memorial Bench Shortly after the boy's disappearance, a public memorial, that of a jade-colored bench, was erected exactly at the very spot where he was seen leaving the fairground by the general public. This can be seen directly to the right of the entrance to the Carnival Leisure Park on Wellington Road in Wokingham. A nameplate on a plank of wood at the top of the bench reads in memory of Mark Tildesley. When Mrs. Tildesley died in 2011, a second nameplate was put on the bench, with her name on it, on the plank of wood directly beneath the one with the boy's nameplate on, in remembrance of her. Memorial service A memorial service was held on January 30, 1993 at the Rose Street Methodist Church, now the Wokingham Methodist Church in Rose Street in Wokingham, next to what is now the Small Marks and Spencer store which was a Waitrose at the time of both Tildesley's disappearance and murder, in 1984 and the memorial service in 1993 and which is located on the other side of the road to the Tildesley's home in Rose Court. Headstone A headstone to Tildesley was erected, on January 30, 1993, at the Free Church Burial Ground on Reading Road in Wokingham. It reads in loving memory of Mark Anthony Tildesley born August 31, 1976.